these are some of the creepiest invasive species. I got you, buddy. Hold on. Mike Kimmel is a state contracted python hunter in Florida. In 2018, he was on a routine survey of the Everglades when he jumped out of his car to save an alligator from a python. I got him. Gator's still alive. I got you, buddy. Hold on. I was able to locate the head of the python, which I grabbed immediately. It just kind of laid there for a minute, I guess, a little daze, maybe catching its breath. Got him. Got him. Pythons are invasive to Florida, and the local wildlife hasn't adapted to their predatory ways. Luckily, Mike was there to save the alligator. Here you go. After the first nudge, it did swim away in the water, so he's all right, but <laughs> it was a close one. You want to wrestle the same? <laughs> it is incredibly creepy. Those creepy crawlers are called jumping worms and they're also an invasive species. And they're found in all sorts of soil type, from forests to gardens, and they're spreading quickly throughout the United States. In 2021, ecologist Brad Herrick shared the dirt on these bad worms. They're not really, you know, jumping like, like you and I think of jumping. They're more just sort of uh, flopping, more flopping. And so if you get a, get a bunch of jumping worms together, you know, they'll probably be able to get off the ground maybe an inch, so not, not very high. You know, they can get up to, depending on the species, eight inches long, and they'll act like a snake. There's no predators for them. Um, they can multiply quickly, and there's lots of food for them. Herrick is working with other scientists to try to stop the spread of jumping worms. They're found in 37 states, as far as we know now as well as Ontario. Um, native species can quickly do a number on native species that don't have defense mechanisms against, against their invaders. So it's still early in the invasion, but it's happening fast. In 2021, an Asian giant hornet's nest was found and eradicated in Washington state. And officials say the hornets were not happy to see them. I will say this, this nest was a little more aggressive uh, than the nest we encountered in 2020. In 2020, the first nest of this invasive species, nicknamed the murder hornet, was found. But this second nest was three times bigger and the bugs were ready to defend their home. Upon starting our vacuuming, unfortunately, because the tree was so rotted away, the hornets were able to exploit this and create a second opening and did come out. Uh, a few of us who were working very tight in the area were approached by the hornets and they did actually attempt to sting us this time. Fortunately, no one was injured. The WSDA asked people to continue to set traps and report sightings because the only way they're going to stop the problem is with community cooperation. Hammerhead flatworms are bad news. And they're a big threat. So the hammerhead flatworm is an invasive species that is a predator of earthworms. And even though it's also a worm, people think, well, what's the difference between them? And really, it's that one eats the others. Regular old earthworms are good for the soil. These guys are anything but. It causes ecological harm. It harms our environment by killing earthworms, which can cause money problems because our crops, our gardens, our forests, they depend on earthworms to survive. Hammerhead flatworms can also defend themselves. They secrete chemicals that make animals sick. That's their defense mechanism. They're trying not to get eaten. So those chemicals can make um, chickens sick, dogs, cats. If you've got hammerhead flatworms, you have to be careful how you get rid of them. So if you cut it into pieces, it'll become more flatworms in just a couple of days. You can squish it if you want to. I think that's a little gross. So it really does come down to anybody, any human finding it and removing it from the environment. Florida, already full of terrifying animals and critters, is now battling massive invasive snails. So the, the giant African land snail that, you know, we use the acronym GALS, G-A-L-S. It originally came from West Central Africa, um, and it has been carried around um, partly accidental. 
um, right, hitchhiking on uh, potted plants. African land snails, which can grow to be the size of a human hand, were detected in July of 2022, so the area was quickly quarantined. They are extremely destructive to horticultural crops. To some extent, they, they can do damage to landscape. The other concern is that they are the intermediate host for the rat lungworm. And when humans ingest these mollusks or their slime, it leads to problems. If people eat that with their salad, then they can become infected. If it gets into people because we're not the right host, it gets lost. And so instead of ending up in the lungs, um, it will end up inside the eyeball. Uh, it will end up inside the brain and will cause, a, when it gets into the brain, it uh, causes a meningitis. To avoid this, washing and cooking food properly will help. It is like a commercially produced salad mix. It should have already been thoroughly washed. With your home produce, I would give it a, a good rinsing. Also, avoid touching the snails. I normally recommend wearing gloves. Overall, it's best to be cautious. If you see these large snails, and they're fairly distinctive, call the Division of Plant Industries. Let them know, and they'll come out. The other thing that we recommend is for homeowners to make sure that they keep roof rats in the neighborhood under control. And that can either be with trapping in houses or bait stations, poison bait stations. We want to try to break the life cycle in all the places where it's susceptible. So control the snails, control the rats. And if you do that, you control the rat lungworm. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Andreas Wendell.